Hi, Carrie. Hey, Jake. So, what are we talking about today? Holy shit. <laughs> we are fucking breaking it down. Talking about Sabrina the goddamn teenage witch. Season one episode, I don't fucking know. <laughs> there is thanks to be given. Praise Satan. Praise Satan. <laughs> All right. Uh, well, let's get right to it then. You fucking get what you get. And I do not get upset. Correct. Correct. Okay, cool. Oh, goodness. Okay, let me minimize that. Minimize that. Minimize that. Not interested in talking about that. And what I am interested in talking about is which fucking Thanksgiving. Yeah, which Thanksgiving? There, There is much to be thankful for. Is there, though? No, there's nothing to be thankful for. This is horrifying in so many ways. Because one chick once Donner partied herself to save a bunch of witches, now we gotta, like, sacrifice a witch, Hunger Games style. You know, it's a uh, it's a long and So, yeah. Oh, man. Uh, I got things to say about the Donner party, but... <laughs> okay, I can't wait. <laughs> I, I think maybe you taking the lead on this one since uh, you seem to have some more thoughts than I do. And my thoughts are just like, why? Why why was this written? Why did they make this? Why did I watch this? Why did I enjoy watching this? Yeah. And will they ever get good lighting in their school? No. Like, those are the only questions I have. Well, my thoughts are very stupid. So um, I'm here for them. This is like, there's a little bit of Scooby Gang stuff. This is pretty much all a Sabrina situation. Um, so, uh, we're coming up on Thanksgiving. Sabrina and Harvey are walking home. They're like, Hey, what are you doing for Thanksgiving? And they're both like, Oh, nothing much. Same old, same old. Um, oh, uh, Harvey says grandpa Kinkle is coming to drink beer and hunt deer. And that won't come up later. No, uh, there is no horrifying family secrets, um, in the Kinkle, uh, family. Not even a little bit of genocide. Not even a little bit. I, I have to say, this is an episode that really gave me a sense of, oh, yeah, this is kind of a small town. And, you know, like everybody's family's history has to do with everyone else's family history. And yet none of them seem to know that until Wardwell gives them the assignment of finding out about their family's pasts. You know, I agree with you wholeheartedly. Like, even in my high school which was bigger, like there are some prominent families in my town that sort of everyone just knew their story. So if it's a really small town where everyone's sort of part of a prominent family, everyone must know everything already, you would think. Now, let me ask you this. Whose family story did you think was best? Maybe Susie's. So what are we talking about? Uh, my ancestor, Dorothea, she was an early settler in Greendale and was also a pirate who helped a group of women fleeing religious persecution from Scotland. I mean, that's kind of the best of all possible families. I don't have anything like that. Uh, that you know of. That I know of. I mean, and the other, you know, the other, the rest of the Scooby gang is like, I don't know, Harvey's family sucks. We already knew that. Sabrina's family's banana pants. We already knew that. <laughs> Let me let me ask you about Roz's family. So Roz goes to talk to Nana, who is blind. Just like Roz is going. And Nana says that she has something called the cunning. What is that? It's uh, a hunch, a sixth sense in your bones that helps us to see things when others, like your daddy, remain blind my cunning started to manifest when i was just about your age and yours yours should be starting up now yeah she's got the shinning boy <laughs> you read my thoughts you've got the shinning you mean shining Shh. you want to get sued so then Roz goes back later and brings Susie with her for reasons that I guess just because they're friends. I asked Susie to come with me because... Because I scared you the last time. This show 
gives us very little, you know, sometimes it gives us too much explanation about things that don't matter. And it sort of sweeps everything else under the rug. We don't know when this takes place. <laughs> we will never know. We will never know. Uh, Nana uh, greets Susie. Nana Ruth, this is my friend from school. Hello, handsome fella. Oh, no. Nana, her name is Susie. No, it's okay, Ross. We're good. We're good. Like, Nana and I, tight. It seemed like Susie learning of her family's piratical past and talking to Raza's grandma led to her in some way not wearing dresses. I'm guessing, yeah. I think that had 100% to do with it. Because at the beginning of the episode, she was wearing a honestly very super cute dress, but it did not suit her. It, I would look much better in it. Yeah. So that I'm glad that Susie got an episode where she would whatever pronouns um, Susie ends up wanting to use uh, is not just like kicked around a whole bunch. Cause that was kind of what happened with the, was it the last episode, the episode before whatever shit happened in, in both of them. Yeah. I, you know what? Thinking about that, I really like the fact that they didn't sort of like throw it in your face though. It wasn't like a made into a big deal. It was just kind of a, you know, Oh, as you're watching the, the episode you can see her so you can see her wheels turning you can see sort of the progression like it wasn't there was no scene of her like taking off the dress and putting on the cool pirate outfit it's just you know at the end of the episode she was wearing pants yeah i agree i mean Susie, i like Susie in general and it's nice to see yeah it's just nice to see i would totally watch like the Susie show like a trans kid whose best friend is a witch and like i guess i just i don't know I, I like that that the fact that they were actually really kind i think and thoughtful about about the Susie arc this week yeah i agree um in less well written uh area of the show uh with regarding the minor characters like raza's grandmother basically says that the women in their family are kind of destined to become blind and that they, this is involved in their, uh, I want to say shining. <laughs> you want to get sued? Cunning, I think, maybe. Yeah. The Cunning. Another Lifetime movie. That <laughs> and then, well, no, maybe this doesn't contradict what we know already. Because, because previously, like, Roz's dad said. You say all the time. Grandma Walker went blind because she didn't have faith. You're not like her, Rosalind. You have faith. But now that I think of it, uh, Nana basically says, your dad's an idiot. I thought you came to talk to me because you was worrying you don't have enough faith, which is nonsense. So I should give it more credit than I was about to. I mean, so that means Roz is a witch of some sort or has some sort of magic just like Sabrina does. I guess the story is supposed to be that Roz's ancestors accused some women of being witches and then were cursed as a result with blindness. But then this cunning was either a side effect of that or something that came out because whatever. It doesn't have to make sense. And then Harvey's family uh, were once the Von Kunkels. And now are the Kinkles, and uh, them motherfuckers are witch hunters. Harvey asks his grandfather. Have we always been miners? Not always. Back in the early days when we were Von Kunkels, we hunted and trapped. And then there was that terrible winter, and those people. What people? Well, no one knew where they came from, but they lived on the outskirts of town. And the townsfolk used to say that they were tunneling in them hills. I.e. the witches. They claimed we stole their land. Did we? Steal land from them? Well, the hill people scared the townsfolk. And it was decided that someone uh, should get rid of them. And that duty fell to us. And after they were gone, we made use of the land. What happened to the people? The hill people? You're coming hunting with us this year, ain't you? I'll show you what happened. Yeah, and it was super, like, matter of fact. Just like, yep, this is a thing we did, and now we live in their house. Bye. 
And so the witch hunters, they go on a hunt and they find witches. And it's not at all contrived. <laughs> well, so did you get a sense uh, that Wordwell intended for that to happen or I think it was just supposed to I mean maybe uh, again I'm either giving the show too much credit or not enough credit but I think it was just supposed to show um you know the parallel and that was it mm. I don't know if, I don't the thing is Wardwell is so fucking inept I can't imagine her you know using the deer to draw the hunters to the witches or anything like that. I think it might have just been like, this was a storyteller's choice. It really wasn't a good one. I guess what we can say about about Harvey's plot is that his father and grandfather take him out hunting. Yeah, some family. Maybe his brother was there. I don't fucking remember. Hard to say. There were some Von Kunkels. Yeah. So they go back to the uh, where the hill people live. Um, they say what the name is. Oh, Moon Valley. And they find it, they come across a stag and the grandpa wants Harvey to kill it. We find out later that Harvey didn't. And in fact, feels really bad that he was unable to prevent it from getting killed. And uh, so they, they shoot the stag and it turns out that it's a familiar, which is, that's a, that was a hell of a special effect. Just a bunch of little plastic parts. That sure was. Yep. That was good use of their time and money. Well, I think not necessarily a whole lot of either. So that's basically the story there. And then? So that so what Sabrina's deal is, we, we, get, we get to find out about which, which Thanksgiving, a.k.a. the Feast of Feasts, something which Sabrina has apparently ne never heard of before, which is weird. Feast of Feasts, Sabrina, is one of our coven's holiest holidays. It's... Similar to mortal Thanksgiving, but... The menu is slightly different. It's meant to honor the single greatest sacrifice a witch ever made to save her coven. Praise Sister Freya. Now we meet again. Who's Freya? A lot of what happens in this series is super fucking weird because she grew up with very devout r witches who seem to be the type who go to all of the holidays and all of the events and participate and have done so did they just like send sabrina away to a camp every time there was a holiday and she just never knew about it why do they have to fucking explain every holiday to us every year it could be she's known about all these holidays but now She's learning about, like, why it's horrifying. You know, like every other kid does about Thanksgiving. Like, oh, you just kind of do Thanksgiving. You do Thanksgiving in one year. You're like, oh, my God, Thanksgiving is the fucking worst. Why couldn't it be like that? Anyway, you get me at my you're getting me at my worst tonight. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm just mad. If I if I can't handle you at your worst, Gary, I don't deserve you at your best. It's true. You don't deserve me at my capybara. <laughs> <laughs> um correct so <laughs> <laughs> i was trying to come up with a come comeback but then i was just laughing so much at what you had said there was a tweet a while ago i don't even remember who who tweeted it but it was like if you can't handle me at my snake you don't deserve me at my capybara <laughs> some teenager in the his dark materials universe probably <laughs> And I think of that all the time. It lives in my head very rent-free. If you can't handle me at my snake, you don't deserve me at my capybara. Oh, man. Words to live by. Words to fucking live by. So Sabrina is told by her aunt. The men of Greendale had hunted all the animals, so, you know, really there was nothing to eat. The witches would have starved and died that winter had it not been for the sacrifices of Freya, the youngest, strongest witch. She, um... Freya slit her own throat and offered up her body so that the coven would have sustenance through the cold months into the spring. As a result, every year, they, the Dark Lord identifies 12 families, a representative 
is selected from each one. And then there's a lottery and then the one that question mark wins question mark um, kills herself and is eaten. So Sabrina doesn't love this story. Wait, are we seriously talking about cannibalism? And Ambrose defends this by saying, Not unlike the Donna Posse. So as I have thoughts about this, Carrie. Tell me some stuff about your thoughts. So I don't know if I've mentioned this, but I really hate David Front, a conservative commentator, um, ex-George W. Bush administration uh, speechwriter, I think. Yeah, I mean, this is worth hating. Yes. <laughs> um, and like he, you know, he was a never Trumper and stuff. Like there were a lot of people came to kind of like him over the last five years or so. I am not one of them. I still hate him. I think he sucks. I was going to say, is it, a, is it a like or is it a, well, he's dunking on the people I hate, so therefore he's okay? Yeah, like people will say that he's a moderate or, you know. So uh, the fact that I hate David Frum is something that I've talked about on the internet for a number of years, including on LiveJournal, back when LiveJournal was a thing that people did. So I posted some rant about David Frum and someone pointed me to this, to this essay uh, written by a philosopher named John Holbo, who wrote this long, like pretty funny, if you hate David Frum, uh, essay about Frum's book. And he quotes Frum as saying, contemporary conservatives still value that old American character. William Bennett, in his lectures, reads admiringly from an account of the Donner Party written by a survivor that tells the story in spare, stoic style. He puts the letter down and asks incredulously, where did those people go? Mm. So uh, anyway, I thought about that, and I think it is, I, I, I feel like there is a parallel to be drawn between Frum's admiration of the Donner party and his feeling that the fact that according to from, we don't have people like that anymore is because of changes in society that are bad. Uh, I feel like there's a connection to be made between that and the witches saying um, the sacrifice was a great thing. And so we have to do the exact same fucking thing every year for no reason <laughs> and sacrifice. I mean, most of them seem like, well, of course, how you can't tell how old a witch is by looking at them, but they all seem pretty young. I mean, while you can't tell how old a witch is, they at least seem to be able to get into middle age and older. Zelda and Hilda, e.g. So we'll say, yeah, we'll say that they are at least still younger witches as opposed to some of the others. They're the youngest of that group. So uh, anyway, but the point of this. So you might as well kill them. <laughs> Uh, yeah. So anyway, uh, my, my main point in bringing that up is so that when you, you see the, uh, the stand-ins for the, the devil in this show, you should think of David Frum. Yeah, I'm happy to help. Yeah. Very good. Thank you. I'll do that thing. So there's, um, uh, some really dumb interplay where like when, uh, Sabrina and Harvey come home from their walk at the beginning of the episode, Sabrina invites him in, but then notices that there's a bunch of sheep intestines, like nailed to the door and she's like why don't actually why don't we why don't we call this a night bye bye um so that means that their family's been chosen as one of the lottery contestants you know there's there's so few families of witches around because i mean we've seen their church of night and, and how many people that seats and how many people were at sabrina's um 16th birthday extravaganza like it seems like if there are 13, they'd get chosen every time. Yeah, totally. There's only 13 families here. Like, there's only 13 people in this high school. Like, of course, every single year it would be the same family. So I was sort of surprised by that, but whatevs. Yeah, and it was only a few episodes ago that um, Zelda had a dream in which she murdered a, a witch child to serve him up to the Dark Lord. It was the plumpest child I could find, Dark Lord, but he, he was a child of night. And with our numbers depleted, Daughter Zelda, 
I mean, that was a dream, obviously, so not necessarily contradictory, but I don't know. Well, the whole thing is... Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty sure, like, every single episode is written by someone who's never seen the show before. That's the only thing I can, I can do to explain the contradictions. I don't know. That might be part of my writer, if I were hired to write for Sabrina, is you don't have to watch the show. Don't worry about it. <laughs> Just here are the characters. Here's a couple of basic pictures, and uh, make sure there's a monster. And I'm not going to tell you how it got there, what kind of monster it is, and what it does. Go for it. Incorporate some kind of weird Rubik's Cube if you can. That would be the best. So Zelda, anyway, Zelda is like, you know, obviously I'm going to represent the family. And Sabrina's like, no, you can't. There are only like four Spellmans left. We can't keep losing Spellmans. But Zelda insists. But then Sabrina gets this idea of like, hey, wait, but what if I volunteer to be the sacrifice my aunts would never let that happen zelda will see how she was wrong to volunteer because it's like what what is the end game here so she volunteers so then either zelda has to what say cannibalism is bad in front of all these angry witches that's what she was hoping for honestly that's exactly what she was hoping for she's like if i get her to see that it's wrong to eat me, then she'll realize it's wrong to eat anybody and she will denounce this whole thing and she will put a stop to this. So she thought if she got in the way that her aunt would just be like, oh my God, no, we can't eat her. And if we can't eat her, we can't eat anybody. I I don't know. We're just going to go with it. Sister Zelda, is there a problem? So one of the things we learned in this episode is that you should not play chicken with Zelda. Fuck no. No, Your Excellency. My brave niece would like to represent the family this year. So, Serena, by all means, go ahead. Fuck you. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, you you fuck with with her. You are now a handmaiden. So, right. You know, the the, uh, nominees each take a slip of paper and burn it. And the one that burns yellow is the queen of the feast. And the one who's... Paper burns red is the handmaiden. So those turn out respectively to be Prudence and Sabrina. So now Prudence is stoked. She is so happy she's going to get eaten. This is like a huge honor. She is ready to feast. Oh, I see. Fe- feast. Be- yeah, I get it. Yeah, she's going to go to her handmaiden's house and have a big old dinner. Um, would be, Would bathing in buttermilk be like, one of your last acts on earth i mean 100 percent, yes really that sounds amazing that just sounds like it would soothe my skin on my way out i mean honestly it could be buttermilk it could be uh, face cream i don't care just that, that silky smooth again i probably sound really horrifically disgusting right now saying <laughs> yes i will bathe in buttermilk i give no fucks i will do it well before i die milk it does milk it does the body milk it does the body I just feel like maybe she bathes in buttermilk and then gets like dredged in flour. And well, yes, it is. It is a a reference to being deep fried. Of course, I mean that's how you tenderize the skin. Pass it on. Um. Oh, do you remember the soundtrack during the uh, buttermilk scene? I don't remember half of this. Lucky you. Anyway, uh, as uh, Venus and Furs. <laughs> Oh, of course it was. Venus and Furs, which doesn't really have anything to do with the scene, but uh, it's an iconic Velvet Underground song, I suppose. Mm-hmm. They reuse it later for even less reason. I think they just had, you know, the money that they should have spent on special effects. <laughs> they used on getting the rights to, to play that song. So they had to get their money's worth and play it twice. Yeah. And then she also wants... Uh, macaroons a plate of macaroons yeah i could go for macaroons i mean macaroons are fine that's not what i would choose as my last meals like my my last meals if it were you know oh bitch is gonna be eaten soon you get to choose whatever you want you are the queen of the world you know twins pizza would be in there so i'd have to get some twins pizza i'd have to get some bojangles from north carolina i'm gonna be a very 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 uh fussy queen i mean you gotta like sabrina is gonna be fulfilling your your every want i know so like i have a handmaiden to get all this for me 
you know. So yeah, I'll bathe in buttermilk if I get some Bojangles out of the deal. If I have to become Bojangles afterwards, so be it. And then you have an orgy with every named male character in the in the series. Well, most every male. Every young. Every non-Harvey male. <laughs> yeah, I guess there are a number of exceptions, actually. But Ambrose is there. Ambrose is totally there. Nick Scratch is there. I don't even remember who else is there, but there's, you know. One of the people there It was, uh, I think, one of the, well, let's see, what was. Was one of them Ambrose's boyfriend? No. Well, I don't know. You know, I admit I have a little trouble telling Ambrose's boyfriend from Nick Scratch, but I believe it was Nick who was there. And then later on, Ambrose is hanging out with his boyfriend, I think. Yeah, because I know Ambrose was there and Nick Scratch was there, but I thought there was another person. There are some ladies there as well. Well, yeah. Was it her sisters? Uh, wait. I wrote something down. It also helps that Darling Nikki here is hornier than a toad. It's like a Prince reference, right? Darling Nikki is a song, yeah. Oh, and the other thing I want to say about the orgy is that everyone's wearing clothes. The next morning, Sabrina convinces Prudence to go to Baxter High School. You could come with me if you want. And why would I do that? Boys. Lots and lots of mortal boys to torment and seduce. Or both. Who knows, Prudence? Maybe you'll find the meaning of life at Baxter High. Oh, you had me at boys to torment. Like, what does Sabrina think this will accomplish? I don't know. I mean, is she trying to just show her, like, that life is worth living by taking her to school? Everyone's favorite thing. I mean, what the fuck? So they go into the library and they find the Scooby gang talking about their family histories. And Prudence figures out that Harvey is a Van Kunkel. Those hill people your ancestors killed were witches. Which makes your family very <laughs> confidence. Everybody knows that witches aren't real. Your family committed atrocities and blood atonement is to man. Kidding! Wait, wait, wait. She's kidding! Oh, she flips out hard. And you know what? I was kind of here for it. She's, she shouldn't have to hide who she is around these people. I mean, whether or not she, you know, literally should or shouldn't. But she's like, bitch, I live my whole life in the witch world. I don't do this back and forth flipsy flopsy shit. Like, fuck off. I'm not going to hide who I am because of you. So then Sabrina and Prudence run into Wardwell. Uh, and Wardwell says that she's been looking into the Feast of Feast thing. And this is where she's like, hey, let's go to Moon Valley and talk to this witch who rejected being queen of the feast. Anyway, back in the woods, uh, the weird sisters, all three of them are there. Sabrina's there. Wardwell's there. Venus in first plays again for no particular reason. They go visit Desmelda. What made you run, Desmelda, from the Dark Lord? I didn't run from the Dark Lord. I ran from my high priest. Prudence does not enjoy the story, and it seems like some doubt's been put into her mind. Anyway, back in the woods, the Kinkles are out shooting. They come across a stag. It's Harvey's first hunt. He should do the honor. They find the stag. There's a purple. What is it? It was a familiar. And he lived in Moon Valley. So then they uh, they hide the the goblin deer thing and themselves, of course. Sabrina's like, it totally wasn't my boyfriend. It totally wasn't my boyfriend. Um, yeah, well, it wasn't, but meh. Nobody knows that it wasn't him, including us, the audience. But Prudence Super wants to kill Harvey. Well, you know, Prudence and Carrie have something in common. Do it. Prudence asks why. How is your faith in the mortal boy any different than my faith in the Dark Lord? And Sabrina's like, well, because I've seen my boyfriend's dick and I haven't seen the Dark Lord's dick. One of them is very real to me and the other one is not. I don't know why they didn't hire us to write these episodes. <laughs> Hit us up. Be like, Sabrina, you have seen my penis. Therefore, you know I am real. Love, Harvey. So, like, it sounds like, oh, this is a super fair question. But it's not a fair question at all. Because, I mean, for reals. For reals, Prudence. For reals. One of them is uh, a human body. The other one is something you've probably never seen. Because it seems like the Dark Lord doesn't really point himself out a lot. It's true. Um, and... There's this weird thing. I forget if it happens here or some other time in this episode, but uh, 
at one point sabrina is like i don't know what happens after we die that it's impossible to know what will happen after you die but like you know this is a world where there are demons and a literal stairway to hell open you'd think there'd be a little more um you know i don't know maybe a, a post-mortem guide <laughs> Because it seems like they know some shit. I mean, I'm not, I'm not, because everyone lies about everything. I'm not going to say it's necessarily going to be easy to figure out, but it doesn't seem impossible. There are ghosts. There is time travel, sort of, in dream stories. I mean, people are dead in this show. <laughs> yeah. You know, I hadn't thought about that, but now this is going to bother me a lot. Fuck. Thanks. You're welcome. So at around this point, Lady Blackwood comes to Zelda in a panic. What's wrong with you? Your blood pressure is abnormally high. You're having a panic attack. Have you done any intense spell casting lately? Sometimes that can stress a pregnancy. It was dangerous, but, but I, I had to do it. And it turns out that, you know, them thar sluts are coming to take what's what's belonging to her. Who's plotting? Squared sisters? Those sluts. A lot of gendered uh, insults in this episode. Yeah. And, you know, I, I say sluts because that is literally what Mrs. Blackwood says. So then we find out, oh, shit, Father Blackwood has other kids. We knew this already. I think we maybe didn't, though. I think we were confused about it. Well, I remember in the episode with, where, she, um, where Sabrina first went to the, the school and it was like, there's no excuse, Father. That will not happen again. I, I guess I just sort of got that confused with, well, this is his daughter. But turns out, this is his daughter. So we weren't actually confused. We were right. We were very, very right. We just kind of, we did the math a little wonky, but we got out, we, we got the same solution. So this hasn't been proven yet, but uh, Sabrina and company have very strong suspicions that this is the case. Light, Lady Blackwood says that she thinks that all three of the weird sisters are Blackwood's daughters and that she thinks that they're going to try to kill the twins. So, uh, yeah, I mean, she's probably not wrong. But they don't necessarily know that. So also that means like Father Blackwood is going to eat his own daughter. It does mean that. And I did think about that. It does. I mean, yeah, he's going to eat his own daughter. Like that's his child that he's going to sacrifice and eat. And he knows it. So, yeah, so the, the spell that she'd cast was so that um, Prudence's paper would be yellow. That was the spell. She wants to get her eaten. So they have a dinner. They invite Lady, they invite the Blackwoods over and feed them truth serum, basically. Constance, Prudence is our queen. No, she's not my queen. She's a bastard. So Lady Blackwood confirms that she made Prudence be chosen. Why would you do that? Because she and her slut sisters are your seed. Because you are a voracious slut yourself. And that means trouble for my children. And Blackwood himself confesses that Prudence is indeed his daughter. And then he just, you know, tells the other, um, the, the other weird sisters that they're not, in fact, his daughters. But no, you're just orphans. The one thing I don't like about this is that... Um, Sabrina constantly and continuously tells every fucking person her goddamn business. So she tells Wardwell everything with fucking prudence there. Sabrina is bad at keeping secrets. She, not only is she bad at keeping secrets, she's really bad at reading who, you know, her, her allies should be because Wardwell is kind of slinking around. Like she's a fucking villain. I mean, she is, but like, like a cartoon villain, which she is. Um, but still she's like practically tiptoeing with her hands and claws. Mm -hmm. She's so like, obviously manipulative and conniving. And I was like, why does Sabrina not, see this this is a caricature of someone who is manipulative and conniving like what uh. yeah it's kind of it's kind of funny like the tone of voice that she says things in there is like i'll do my research see if mr kinkles yields anything of note like it is so dripping with you know innuendo and sarcasm at the same time and so much condescension and you're just like, 
how does she not see this? But Sabrina is fucking bright eyed and dumb assed. So Prudence uh, wants to sit on the throne of skulls and she does. Sabrina has blackmailed Blackwood. That was harder to say than I thought it would be. Into saying that he has had a new revelation from the Dark Lord saying that there's not going to be any more Feast of Peace. So he gets up, he starts to announce that, but then one of the other contestants who earlier had said, like, why don't I ever get chosen? Stands up, grabs the knife, slits her throat, and then everyone just like goes to town and eats the hell out of her. They don't, they don't, they, they just, I was not expecting them to like, sushi her yeah i would thought that maybe again buttermilk mm-hmm. you'd think you'd get battered and fried but no they just you know raw human flesh but hey uh, freya lives praise satan yes it's uh it's traditional everybody eats but um sabrina and aunt zelda and then we see the uh the kinkle brothers having a depressing dinner oh yeah 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 yeah. and then they go to the mines they go to the mines and then there are some weird sisters there are there are two weird sisters with with two uh little voodoo dolls mm-hmm. and some rocks and some rocks yes and oh god i hope this is the episode where harvey dies <laughs> i want to see his little fucking brain bashed in i hate him so much well uh you know what who's to say who's to say i know I suspect that it doesn't happen in that fucking bright eyed <sighs> fucking Sabrina will save the fucking day and but she'll tell Wardwell everything. Susie will be a little queerer, Roz will be a little blinder. The world will keep spinning. So I think this was chapter eight. Is that right? I think so. So I believe there's three left. The thing is, I'm really enjoying it. I just, you know, I I hate it at the same time. Like, I enjoy watching it with you. I enjoy talking about it, you know, with you. But uh, it's a fucking bad show. Well, right. I was going to ask you if it's better or worse than Riverdale. But I think we should. That can be something we can talk about with the last episode. That could be a question for a later date. All right. So that's, I think... Any any final anything that we didn't talk about or I mean none of it matters. So I mean whatever we miss, we miss. Who gives a shit? Watch the episode or don't. It's a it's a it's a it's a fun show. It's really visually interesting, even though nobody has fucking light bulbs. I like it and I I will fucking kill a pony to get all of Sabrina's clothing because they are killer. Um it's it's a fun show to watch, but it's not good. You know, I, I kind of one of the things I've been thinking about a little bit with it is. Um, like there are some shows, I mean, Lost, I feel is kind of an iconic one where at the where at a certain point you realize like the, the show is kind of sold as having a mystery that there is a solution to. But at some point you figure out that the writers have just been making everything up as they go along and they have to like back, write the, the answers to the mystery. Yeah. And they keep adding more mist, whatever there's, there's things, you know, I, I also felt like that was true of the Battlestar Galactica reboot after a certain point. Yeah. But I, I, I mean, at least that was good. I mean, I like lost too. I mean, I, or some of it anyway. Well, you know how I feel about lost. I love lost. It does not hold up well, but I still love it. Like, I, yeah, Hurley for life. So anyway, it, it, this, I don't know. I kind of feel like they probably did plan it out, but it just doesn't feel planned somehow. I don't know. It feels very disjointed. It feels like people made a bunch of episodes and then just, but none of them could really be like continuous. Yeah. So they're just like, oh, here, you know, here are the 10 plots I want you to write. And then, so they don't, they don't join so like is this why there are so many plot holes or is it just laziness but it just feels like it's just 10 standalone episodes that don't really have a much of a thread yeah and i mean in retrospect like lost they each season had like 25 episodes or something it's kind of ridiculous i know um but anyway 
Uh, I've compared Sabrina to um, David Frum and to Lost. I feel like my work here is done. Uh, apparently, my phone wants me to go to bed. <laughs> I mean, you should. That is true. So three episodes left. And then, um, and then we decide what to do next. So next, we'll, I'll put out an episode of Riverdale from uh, when we recorded a, a bunch of things about the first season of Riverdale for our old podcasting network. And then we'll talk about a book. Oh, my God. I'm super fucking excited about this book. This book is so good. I can't wait. It's so uh, fuck. What the fuck is it called? It's so good. Why did I forget? Legend Born. So I haven't started reading it yet, but I will start soon. Oh, my God. Okay. So this book is so fucking good. Not only is it a good book, it's like it is good. And it's also about Chapel Hill, North Carolina. And it's so cool. So a little bit about the book. A girl goes to um, college in like an early entrance program for high school seniors or something. She goes to UNC Chapel Hill with her best friend. Finds out that there's magic. What? What? It's so good. It is so good. It is a very well-written book. People who do not live in or ever lived in Chapel Hill, North Carolina have read this book and have really liked it. Her world building is fantastic and very campus accurate. But also not because she makes like underground tunnels and shit, which I don't think exist. But they should. I like this book a lot. I'm really excited. So, yes, we're going to be reading Legend Born by Tracy Dion um, soon because I need to reread it. All right. Well, uh, it's been great to talk to you. It has been great to talk to you, too. Sorry if, like, as always, whenever we do these Sabrina episodes, I'm just like, I don't know what happened. It was bad. We watched it. I chatted with you while we watched it. Oh, fuck. Um, my sense while we were talking was that this is a good one. A good. <laughs> I feel like we did a good job, which I don't always feel when we're recording. Sometimes I'm like, oh, I don't know about this one. We went off the deep end. <laughs> and then it always is fine in editing. But Yeah, it's just sometimes you have to do more editing. And I'm sorry about that. It's no trouble. I guess you cannot win them all. I guess you cannot. Sometimes, sometimes you're the queen of the feast. Other times you're the handmaiden. That was bad. If you don't. If you can't handle me at my handmaiden, you don't deserve me at my queen of the feast. Fuck yes! Give me a call when you get back. Hey there. Hey. Lovewilecrazy.com Riverdale is worse.